Thank you very much for coming along to the tea and loaders and, and drink. I might, I might add, I do the crunchy one. Crispy apple, very comfy, little inside, and not kiwi fruit, passion fruit. Passion fruit. I'm into kiwi fruit. I just state that. You've done a good job with the passion fruit. I like it. <laughs> Um, and also, yeah, feel free anytime if you've got any questions. Oh, that's just fine. Uh, right. that's fine too. Yeah, I thought, um, seeing as we're sitting in a public library and I've had quite a lifelong association with public libraries, I'd start by talking about uh, actually my start with my crime writing career, which was actually to become a reader. Um, I'm from quite a large family, I'm the youngest of 12. So we did not have a lot of books at home, um, the economic, shall we say. And so, and also when you've got that many people in the house, I think we only had eight of most of children staying in the house at one time, plus a border. So, <laughs> <laughs> that's where you come in. But, uh, so, one of my early escapes in life, other than the gully and the creek down the bottom, was uh, to the Greetan Public Library. And, bless her, my mother was one of these women who was really, really recognised the importance of books and reading. And, she gave me that wonderful gift of the ability just to be passionate about reading and books. Um, the Greek Public Library, I was, was where I found for my first obsession with books, really. Um, I have a slightly obsessive personality, so when I hook onto something, I hook into it big time. And one of the first obsessions with a book I had was with a little chap called The Bernstein Bears Almanac. Now, they don't actually have The Bernstein Bears Almanac in the stacks here, but I, I brought along a Bernstein beard book anyway, which is these fellows. <laughs> and, and as a wee five year old I was rather taken with the Bernstein Bears Almanac to the point that I'd get the book out, you know, we had two weeks of glory and then you had to return the book. So I got the book out and then I'd read it for two weeks and then take it back to the library and pop it in the return slot. And then I'd just like hang around <laughs> and hang around and hang around. And the moment the book landed on the return from the day, it was grabbed, got it out again. That went on for quite a while before the staff twigged, and then I got a quiet tap on the shoulder, and they mentioned that you know, some other children might like to get that book out at some stage. <laughs> Another book which, um, I suppose, it was the first chapter book that really turned the reading lights on for me, and I love to use this book as an example because. It shows how much what you read at a young age can actually change the way or affect the way that you're going to live your adult life. And that was this book here, which is T.H. White, The Sword and the Stone. And this is a wonderful, wonderful book of Arthurian legend. And it's got Merlin and Arthur. And Arthur, when he was a little fellow, when he was just a, or just a boy, you know, kicking around with Kay and Merlin has his, his tutor and magician and turns him into various you know, things from fish to falcons to everything under the sun. But the art, yes. But this book, it triggered in me that love of all things Arthurian and medieval. And so for my hobbies, I took up calligraphy uh, and doing, you know, doing my own illuminated manuscripts and pretty things like that. Um, also, I love the whole... Uh, chivalry and knights and armour thing and I didn't go for the whole ladies thing, I went for more the knights and armour thing I think. And so at sport I took up fencing. I was fencing the sport I still do today. So all courtesy of a book when I was a child that seated the big seated love of that. Um, so I always loved historical and history type fiction. I love the Rosemary Sutcliffe books and anything about the um, the Roman Empire and Legion of the Ninth and all these things. In the little library I also stumbled across this wee lady, Elizabeth Peters, and her book about Amelia Peabody. Now Amelia Peabody is the most wonderful character and I love her because she is the first really feisty woman character I ever came across. Um, these are sort of like mystery stories set around the turn of the century, early 1900s, in Egypt. Um, Amelia was one of these women who, who travelled and she sort of like saw herself as an amateur archaeologist and drove these copper archaeologists nuts until the point where one of them saw the only way to fix her was to marry her. So he did. Yeah. And so Amelia, she was this wonderful, feisty, strong board, intelligent, um, adventurous type of a woman and a few of 
of her characteristics have sort of stumbled over into Sam Shepard, who's the main character in, in my book. Um, certainly what you read can colour what you produce later on. And uh, when I was thinking, you know, well, actually Sam arrived fully formed when I finally decided to have a woman character. And, yes, and part of her strengths were some of the strengths that I saw with Vera Amelia. Now the science was kind of a girl, which was um, the dwell through school. And so when Patricia Cornwall came on the scene, um, her very first book was Postmortem, which isn't this one here, this is one I just dived down the stairs and grabbed off the shelf. But Postmortem broke new ground in crime fiction writing, and that she was really one of the first writers to go into the forensic detail of crime writing. And I loved that element of them. I thought they were fabulous books, and the science appealed so much, as well as the stories and a, and a bit of blood and gore thrown into it for good measure. So she was another one who was sort of formative in you know, trying to get that, that allowing the science side to come out. Of course, you know, nowadays, so many books do have this forensic science, and we see so much on TV and things like that. But back in her time, in 1990, that was quite a new ground and quite, quite great. So yeah, Patricia Cornwall is another one. Um, I haven't enjoyed it quite so much recently, but I'm told that her latest book is very, very good. Except my to be read pile is <laughs> this high. <laughs> it is in there, <laughs> but it's sort of gravitating to the bottom at the moment rather than towards the top. So I always had a, a love of reading. And with that love of reading um, came a want to write. I uh, started writing when I was a little girl. Um, always writing stories and things. The New Zealand Herald used to have a little holiday reading competition, so I was just uh, into something in that. And I'm quite tempted to go through and have a wee look and see if I've got them on archive so I can have a giggle. Because somewhere, somewhere along the line, we lost, lost the newspaper clipping. But wanting to write, um, I never actually got the opportunity to do that because I went down the career path and I was in science, so I did a degree in pharmacy and, and found that in a career in pharmacy, because it's a very high concentration job, you know, let's face it, if you make a mistake, you've got the potential to kill someone. So, you know, concentrated so hard all the time. By the time I got home in the evening, I was just too mentally exhausted to even contemplate um, doing anything that involved writing. So my creativity in those days was through my hands and doing handcrafts and cooking and things like that. But it wasn't actually until I had children that I finally had the opportunity to write. Uh, my husband and I decided that um, I was going to stay at home and bring up the children. Um, and, and that just gave me the time. At, at, at that stage, of course, it wasn't just snippets. Um, you know, they were nice enough to actually coordinate and get us to sleep together or you know, at, at the same time. It didn't happen very often, but it was enough. And also writing was something that was mine, which was just lovely, because when you're a mum, you're all things to all people, and you're caring for everyone else's needs first, and you always come very much down the end of the run. So writing was mine, and it was something that was mine. Um, it's, it's quite odd now that my writing is actually shared when it started off being something that was for me. Now it's, it's something for everyone. So, uh, again, uh, it's quite funny. Um, I thought what I would talk about, seeing this New Zealand Book Month about local writers, and, you, and now I'll give you a bit of a background, because um, I thought it would be quite fun, is the importance of setting and place in writing novels. My first novel, which is Overkill, uh, was set in Matara. Now, most people go, well, the first question they ask is, why Matara? <laughs> the second question is, where the hell is Matara? <laughs> <laughs> but when I was writing this novel, my first question, okay, setting, the first question was, okay, do I make this a fictional town or do I make this a real town?